Okay, ladies. So coming in at number one, this is so important, ladies. Please listen to what I'm saying. This is the reason why you're depressed, lonely. You're spiraling out of control. Stop making people responsible for your happiness and validation. I'm going to say that again. Stop making people responsible for your happiness and validation. Let me explain. Because I know what you're thinking. Girl, I don't need nobody to make me. I don't need nobody's validation and, or for people to make me happy. I got you. Let me explain. So let's say, you know, you have a good relationship with your family. You guys are really close. You're close with your siblings. Everything is going great. You love them. You have a good man in your life. He loves you. And like, he's everything you ever dreamed of. Everything is going great. And you have an amazing group of friends, right? And it's like, you are literally feel so happy. Let's be honest. When you are loved correctly by your friends, your family, and your significant other, it literally feels like you're on cloud nine. It really feels good. And then you're making money at your job. You got your place. Like nine times out of 10, nine times out of 10, it's, it's literally almost impossible to be depressed when you have all this love and everything is going great in your life. The reason why I say and this is why it's so dangerous, why I say stop making people responsible for your happiness and validation because one day, right? One day you wake up, you beefing with your family, you don't talk, you're not talking to your siblings, that man that you love so much, you know, he's a great father, amazing husband. He um, wakes up one day and decides he doesn't want you no more. He's leaving you for somebody else. Some girl he's been messing with at his job. Your best friend. Or he just, you know, he wants to divorce you because he fell out of love. You and your mama used to be close. You and your father used to be close. You guys have a fallout. And on top of that, your best friend, your best friend that you thought was like, she was going to be your ride or die, like y'all was going to be friends forever. She switched up on you. And now what? You are spiraling into depression, loneliness. You, you crying to God every day. God help me. I don't know what's going on. I, everyone in my life done, 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 done turned on me. And now you can't even perform well at your job, right? You can barely get out of bed. You was all sexy, all nice and petite. The weight, you're just gaining weight. You're just gaining weight. Why? Because... You can't believe all the betrayal, all the trauma. Everyone, it seems like everyone you loved in your life just done turned on you. So you're to cope with it, you're eating, you're drinking more alcohol, you throwing it back. Don Julio, you throwing it back. Right? Because it's so painful. That's why a lot of people, they turn to substances. And I don't judge people because when you're going through something as traumatic as this, it's like you just need something to feel better to numb the pain. I had to learn the hard way. God exposed that to me when I cried to him one day. I went to God and I said, God, I don't got every every friend I had done betrayed me. I'm not getting along with this. I had, you know, this people in my life that I was like this with turned out to be a snake. This man that I loved, he cheated. I went through all of that, you guys. And I was able to come on top. You know why? Because God told me what, what I told you. What I told you. Because in the Bible it says, your enemies, your enemies, right, is in your household. That goes for family. That goes for your best friend. That goes for the man that you're sleeping with. Your enemies are in your household. God never, every time God talks about ops, in the Bible and people we should watch out for, it's never really your enemies like that. It's the people around you. You see, God knew, God knows how people are. That's why in the scripture it says, listen, charm is deceptive. Don't, don't just, just because somebody smile in your face, charm is deception. Because while the same people that smile in your face, the same people that love you and their heart lies seven abominations the what's the abomination hatred jealousy rage bitterness he said it google it google it if you don't have a bible your enemies are in your household 
God already knew I was going to come crying to him because God was trying to show me the reason why you're depressed and you're lonely and you're sad and you're losing yourself. A lot of your validation came from being loved. A lot of your validation came from the people in your life. And I'm not, I'm telling you right now, the happiest times of my life is when I had a good man. I had a good friend. I'm cool with my family. I'm everything. But the minute fallout start happening, I was spiraling out of control. I literally had to go on a spiritual journey. <sighs> oh my gosh. If I didn't go on a spiritual journey this year, there would be no love in natural. I, I really see my, I would have been in a mental hospital for real because I think the, the amount of times I've been betrayed and hurt and backstabbed and snaked by people, the numbers is unreal. It seems like everyone who's, a, who's ever told me I love you did some snake shit to me. I don't want that to be you. I would even wish that on my worst enemy, but I'm happy it happened. I'm glad the people in my life folded on me, betrayed me, backstabbed me. I needed that because I didn't realize it before. I was searching for love and happy. I made people, I, I turned everyone in my life as if they were God. You see, I noticed when I had an issue, when I had a problem, when I was going through things, God would be the last person I would turn to. I would call up my mom, I will call up friends, you know, sisters, whatever. First, I noticed when I had when I had everything I wanted, money, a nice house, uh, I had a good man, this and that. I didn't pray as much. I always loved God, I always prayed, but he was the back burner. If you're going through a depression right now, you lonely, it's God telling you that's your sign to get right back with God. Because in the scripture it says, trust in me. Don't trust in man. Man will disappoint you. I, your God, will never leave you, never forsake you. You see, I may, I may have lost a lot of people in my life, but by the grace of God, I'm still here and thriving. I feel like I look better than ever. I was so, I was such a shell of myself. And I, I built up, and God gave, God put so much confidence and love in my heart. And on top of that, let's say you do have good people in your life. Let's say you're not, you have never experienced betrayal and backstabbing and snake people in your life. And you have amazing people. One day, God is going to need to call them back home. And he doesn't want you to spiral out of control. There's a lot of people. Oh my gosh, I lost my son. I lost my sister. I lost this and that. What happens when they pass away? God forbid. What's that? What's going to happen to your mental health? You're going to be running around in the in the street crazy. You're going to go into a psychosis because I couldn't live without these people. And God is saying today, no, you can live without people. You can't live without me. Because let me tell you something. Even the people that love you, one day something tragic might happen. And then what's, what's that going to mean for you? What is that going to mean for you? I had um, an ex that I really, really loved. And when he passed away... I remember going to the gym and just, I was crying at the gym, crying on the way home, cry, like crying, crying. I said, God, please, I can't, I can't function like this. Help me to deal with this person's death. You know what I'm saying? I took it really hard. I took his death really, really hard because the last words this man said to me is like, I love, wow, I love you and you're going to leave me hanging because we got into a, 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 a argument and I just, I, I was just, like I was so used to being in toxic relationships that when I had something good, I pushed him, I pushed it away. I pushed this man away. He was so good to me. And he passed away before I, I could even say, I'm sorry, I overreacted. I, you know. Um, and in the scripture it says, Um, I'm close the Lord is close to the brokenhearted. He will comfort you. He comforts you. So I, I told God, I said, you know, you said it yourself. You are close to the brokenhearted. You grieve when I grieve. Help me. I can't deal. And literally, while I was praying, a ray of light came through this. A ray of light, like a whole light. I know you guys probably won't believe it. You got to be you gotta be spiritual to understand what I'm saying. I, I see like a beam of light come through my, my skylight. Right? Right when I told him, God, please help me. I can't deal with this. I'm already depressed because I already done had fallouts with people. Now I'm dealing with death. 
Come on, like, and I found out he died a year after. I found out he died a year after he passed. Way too traumatic for me. I need you, God. I prayed, I asked God, and it's like, I, it's like his presence came through my house. And every single day after that, I, I haven't cried since. I'm sad. Don't get me wrong. I'm sad. I hold him in my heart. I love him so much. But I'm able to do my content, move around, and know that God got him. I know this man is in heaven. He has to be in heaven because he was, even if, even when, I never even seen him upset. Mind you, he seen me. I done cursed him out. Da, 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 and he always remained, not, like nothing made him upset. Like he was not upset. He was really God sent when I look at those messages. I feel bad when I read my messages to him because I'm over here being nasty and rude. He should never, he should have blocked me. But he was just like, listen. I know you. I'm not going nowhere. I love you. I love you, and I feel like we could work this out. And I'm, like, I'm not working shit out with you. But he still was sweet and loving. Nothing like the men in this generation. At least the men that I've experienced after his death. It's probably karma from how I treated him. I say all of that to say this. You don't realize how much you need God until people fold on you, until um, you experience a death in your family or a, a, a death by somebody close to you. You ever see women and they lost their kids and you, you don't understand how strong they are? They're like, well, by the grace of God, I'm here. That's real. I don't know if this is your sign. This is your sign to get right with God, get on your spiritual journey. Because I'm seeing these are I'm seeing people die left and right. Don't go, don't die without getting right with God. Because some for some reason, people think heaven and hell is, is, is a fake. It's fake. I'm telling you, I experienced it. It's not. It's not. I'm telling you. Not even only that, but I've been to. I've been to therapy. I, I had I had like two or three sessions a few years ago. I've been to therapy. It felt good to get things off my chest. It felt good to have a therapist tell me how I should move in certain situations. But it's nothing like getting on my knees and crying out to God. God, I need you. I need you. This video, I'm so sorry. It's not even meant. I'm not trying to make this a God focused video. But I just want you to understand that if you've been experiencing loneliness and depression, baby, this is just the beginning. This is life. Once you get over one heartbreak, you're going to meet another man that's amazing. He's going to break your heart. You had a fallout with a friend. You left her ass alone. You find another friend. Guess what? She might switch up on you. I experienced that. Back to back. Like snake stuff. To the point where I felt like I was losing my mind. To the point where I felt like as a defense mechanism, hey, I don't want no man. I don't want no friends. Till, still to this day, I can't have no friends. It's PTSD. It's trauma. It's, I can't have no man. I don't. I, there was a point where I couldn't even tell the difference between real love and love bombing. It was really bad. It's like, I, I just felt like, yo, I'm such a loving person. And I know what you're thinking. Like, girl, they can't always be, they can't all be the problem. You probably the problem. One thing about me, and this is how you know somebody has a good heart. One thing about me if I have a fallout with somebody, I'm not going to um, I'm not going to pretend to be the victim. If I did something, I'm a, when I when I tell a story, when I fall out with somebody, I say the whole thing. I say what I did, whatever, whatever. I ain't never had no friend cut me off. I ain't have no man cut me off for being a fake ass bitch or you know a cheating ass lying. Nothing. I treat everybody how I want to be treated. The problem is, is that. When I when I I hold a lot of things in, and when I finally say, "Listen, I don't like that you did this, that you did that," that like clockwork. Instead of saying, "Okay, I'm sorry, Paige," because me, I'm very quick to apologize. Anybody who knows me, say what you want about me. If if you tell me, "Yo, you did something, and you know it bothered me, it hurt me," I'm so quick to apologize. I've never had that, and I have a feeling the reason why I'm so quick to apologize is because I I, I am an empath and. I do things to people that I always wish was done to me. So if I've never had somebody apologize to me, I like the last thing I'm going to do is hurt you. I'm going to apologize. You know what I'm saying? If I know that, you know, you've never been celebrated on your birthday, I'm going to go all out for you. You know what I'm saying? I, as When you're an empath person, you just want, like you live to make people happy. You live for people to be celebrated. But then I noticed that 
I did a little bit too much for validation. I felt like I pride myself on being a good person too much to the point where it led me to being a people pleaser. That's I got to do a video about that too. Um, I feel like the only reason why I feel like there was a point in my life I had a lot of people in my life that love me is because I can never say no. Not only can I never say no, if someone did something that I didn't like or said something I didn't like, I kept it to myself to keep the peace. But like, I would never forget this um, um, therapist said this to her client one day. She said, um, okay, so you keep everything in, inside because you don't, you're not a confrontational person and you don't want to start any trouble with anybody. You just want the peace, right? You just want the peace. So you avoid conversations and you don't bring nothing up. But what, when, what happens when you try to keep the peace and you keep everything inside is going to start a war inside of you, uh, inside of you. And that's exactly what happens to me and a lot of empaths. There's, I know I'm pretty sure a lot of you have fallouts with people because you finally spoke up for yourself and they saw, and they saw you speaking up for yourself as you changing and you switching up whole time. No, I didn't switch up. I'm just matching, matching your energy. I don't like the way you talk to me. I don't like the way you speak to me. You know, you finally say how you feel. Now they don't want nothing to do with you. Typical, narcissistic. And now you are blindsided. You're hurt because you're like, oh my gosh, I didn't want to have a fallout with this person. I just wanted to, them to stop hurting me. I just wanted them to stop doing this. And it turned into an argument. Now we're falling out. What? Because when God sees that, you, you fiend too much for people and it's going into a little bit and it's turning into idolatry. Like you're idolizing the people in your life. He's going to remove them from your life. God, one thing about God, he's going to show you why you don't need nobody in this world but him. Because people are eventually going to fold on you. Coming in at number two, I, I, oh my gosh, I, I spent so much time on number one, but I had to really break it down to y'all. Um, number two, always goes hand in hand with number one. Always mentally prepare yourself for someone to switch up on you because it's going to happen. You know, any person who I thought would never switch up on me did. If you find yourself um, like when you go through breakups, if you're the type of person when you go through breakups, you're just like, you're just out of control. You're crying. You're crying on the internet, child. You're making TikToks about what your baby daddy did, what your husband did, what your friend did. I used to do that too. When people hurt me, I used to get on my channel. Okay, five signs, somebody's a fake bitch. And then I'm explaining and, and I'm telling, and I'm saying my real life testimonies. But then I realized you're giving these people too much clout. I mean, unless unless I'm uh, um, doing a video and I really need that example for you guys to understand, I will talk about it. But before, it's like I have to keep talking about it, telling everybody that will listen. This person did this. This person did that. They don't care that they hurt you. I had to bring it to the source. I had to bring it to God, and God showed me how to maneuver and like chill out. I got you. Like don't worry about it. Um, even when you have good solid friends, keep certain stuff to your yourself. Your man, nobody has to know everything about you because when, when, when the time comes when someone switches up on you, because nine times out of 10, they will, everything you ever told them, they're going to start throwing your, oh my gosh, so hurtful. They're going to start throwing everything you said to them in confidence. They're going to throw it in your face. Um, they're going to use it to devalue you, use it to emotionally abuse you. Um, if you talk, if you open up to your man about getting treated bad in your past, oh, that's why your ex cheated on you. That's why, that's why nobody, that's why nobody likes you. And now you're even deeper into depression. And then now they have, they have thrown stuff in your face so much and manipulated your mind so much. Now you feel like you're not even worthy of love. There's some people that will make you feel like, um, damn, am I the problem? When you're not the problem. Always mentally prepare yourself for people to switch up. And you won't ever spiral out of control. Also, your happiness and validation comes from God. If you have friends, you have a good man, you have... That's good. But always put God first in your life. Don't put these people first. Because one thing about people... They're selfish. Everybody's going to put their self first. Put God first and then you after. Okay? 
You can love your man, not with your whole heart. I learned through life in my 34 years of living, the only person I should, I'm going to love with all my heart is him, is God. Because you know what? When I don't listen to, to God and I do my own thing, I go back to him, I still feel his spirit. I still, he's, I, he, I, I can't explain it. I always feel like I'm protected by him. Always feel loved by God. And I'm not going to lie. God punishes us too. When you, when you're not doing the right things, you, you're going to get punished too. And that punishment is going to come in the form of betrayal. Oh, you idolize this person so much. I'm going to make they, Now you're going to see why I say trust in me and not people. That man you love so much. Oh, my man, my man, my man. You post him. Everything is my man. Yeah, he cheated on you. He's this, he's that. And it's not because God want to harm you. It's not that, you know, oh, um, um, God is, you know, we, we're just, uh, it's not that um, God just wants us to praise him and only him just because of admiration. No, the reason why um, the scripture always says, put me first and everything will be added on to me, added on to you. Cast your anxiety, your fears unto me because I care for you. It's because God really cares about his children. God really loves us. And God's, God just wants to protect us from the world. Protect us from people. Protect us. The same way your, your mom and your dad, they could get on your nerves telling you, why do I have to do this, this and that? One thing about my mom, everything she told me when I was a teenager, I see it now as an adult. My mom used to tell me this all the time because at a young age, my grandmother we used, we used to tell her about men, about fake friends, about everything. And, you know, um, when my mom moved, came to, came to America from Haiti, she didn't have her mom, you know, and dad. Her father had passed away. My, my grandmother was in Haiti. All my mom had to carry her through life was my grandmother's words. And it was my grandmother's prayers to help guide her through life. And everything my grandmother told her that she would experience with people in life, my mom experienced with people. But my mom is so strong because she kept everything she my, my grandmother said. And she also knew God. I want you to I want you to look at God as your parents. You see, and this is why it's so important to open up that Bible and know the scriptures. Think about it. Let me make this analogy for you, right? This is why it's so important. Loving God is just not enough. You need to know your scriptures. Let's say you, your mom and your, your mom and your dad, right? You love your parents, right? Let's say when you become 15, God forbid, both of them had passed away. But before they passed away, your mom and your dad, they took the time out to write a book, right? Uh, chapter one, baby girl, this is how you get over a breakup. Chapter two, your mom could talk, tell you about how to deal with fake friends. Like everything you need to know about life, your parents took the time out to write it out for you a guide to help you through life because your parents know because they experience life um your parents know how crazy life is about to get right so they write you this book before they pass away now this is all now just imagine oh my gosh my parents passed away but they're still with me you're gonna guard that book with your life every time you're sad you're gonna be like oh wait my mom before she passed away she she wrote she wrote um a chapter about how to do a heartbreak and you're going to read it. You're going to internalize it. You're going to, you know what I'm saying? And apply it to your life. That's, a, that's how God works. That's how, that's, that's, how, that's, the, I want you to look at the Bible as God took his time to, to make instructions. God took his time to tell you certain stories. All these stories in the Bible is not for entertainment. It's because he, God wants you to internalize these things. Whatever you struggle, somebody else had the same struggle in the Bible and they came out of it. And in the Bible, God is going to show you how they came out of it. That's how you're going to come out of it. Jeez. Ooh, Jesus. Ooh. Oh, oh man, I felt the Holy Spirit. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah, God. Thank you, Jesus. That's why I can stand here and be strong. I could be broken. It won't be for long. You, you might be broken right now. It won't be for long. Okay? And, and uh, coming in number three, this is the last and final tip I have for you to how to stop being emotion dependent on people because it's not smart and it's not wise for your mental health. I want you to practice self-love and put God first. That's it. That's it. That's all. If you put your, if you practice self-love, let me say something because I thought I had self-love. I didn't. 
when I went on my spiritual journey and I'm, and God was revealing to me how I'm so reliant on people for validation and happiness. And I had to agree and tell God, you're right. Because when people leave my life, I get hurt and this and that. And I'm sad for months. What? What? I got on my self-love journey. Oh my gosh. Now that I'm out of my self-love journey, right? When you truly love yourself, I'm looking now because I wrote this down. When you truly love yourself, you will be okay with whoever leaves your life. That man said, oh, I don't want you no more. I'm not attracted to you no more. Bye. Uh, that friend said, oh, you know, th they don't want you in their friend group. They don't like you. They think you think you all of that or whatever. Bye. It's going to be so easy to say bye. When you lack self-love, you're going to beg people. You're going to beg to people to stay in your life. What you mean you don't love me no more? Why you don't find me physically attractive? What? Like what? Now your whole confidence is ruined because of, of a man? Are you kidding me? Every one of us was perfectly sculpted and created by God. And we were created by God in his own image. A man insulting you is like a man insulting God. He thinks you're not attractive. God created you. You're a masterpiece. This is why I say go read your Bible because in the Bible, if you're feeling ugly, if you feel like you're ugly, go in that Bible and, and read what God says about you. He said that I created you in your own image and you, you are beautiful. You're beautiful. When you have the love of God in your life, insecurity where, loneliness where, depression where, mental health issues where, I'm not saying that you should not stop taking your, your if you, if, I mean, stop, if you bipolar, you have medication, stop taking your medication, this and that. I would, I, I can't say that on YouTube. I'm, I'm not going to say that, you know, God will solve all your problems. I'm just speaking from my personal experience. God has, whoo, the, the woman I am today is not me at all. It's God. I will literally be sleeping. I wake up and, and, and God says, you need to fast. You need to. You're spiraling again. You're doing it again where you're, you're, you're idolizing somebody again. Like if I start talking to somebody and I like them too much, I'm, I'm immediately I'm humbled. It's like, oh, no, no, I don't want to fall into idolatry. I don't want to start hyping this man up and telling people about him because I know what's going to happen. He's going to disappoint me. We're not going to talk no more. I just, everything I'm just, everything I just, if I have somebody in my life, I'm happy. If I don't, I'm happy. I have a lot of money, I'm happy. I don't have a lot of money, I'm happy. God will teach you how to be content. Because if you're constantly trying to chase happiness, you constantly trying to seek validation, you will never get to a point where it's where you feel fulfilled. If you notice, girl, people who get surgery, first they start off with just a little Botox here, a little filler here, and then their beautiful face, 10, 15 years later, their face is deformed, their body is deformed, and and, and when you speak to these people, they're like, I should have just been content with myself. I should have left myself alone. I was so beautiful. That's the danger of constantly seeking validation. That's the danger of always trying to be perfect. You're not going to be perfect. We're not perfect. The only, thing, the only person that's perfect is Jesus, is God, okay? It's okay to have imperfections and flaws. Work on your heart because God examines the heart. God blesses those with a good heart, with good intentions that serve him for real and not fake. If you want your life to flourish, love him with all your heart. Lean not on your own understanding. Wake up every day joyful, knowing that God is in control. And that's how you stop being emotionally dependent on people. And that's how you get your life back. And that's how you, you know, you're going to snap out of procrastination, laziness, and unmotivation through God. And self-love. Once God show you who you are, once God reveals to you that people was fake, you're going to be forced to stand on your own two feet. You're going to have to go against the, everyone in your life. If, if no one messes with you, oh well. They don't mess with you because you, cause you're not playing about yourself. When you used to let people play in your face, you had a lot, a lot of people that loved you. Happy birthday to my sis. Always there for me. Yeah. Sorry. While they're talking about, oh, you was always there for me. You always you always used to pay for me. Thank you so much. You should look at that and feel ashamed. That 
They love you so much because of what you did for them. They're not saying they love you because you're just, just your spirit alone, just you being in their life alone brought them happiness. Pay attention to when, to them birthday posts when people say, you're always there every time I need you, aka every time I need to trauma dump, you're there like a dummy, aka every time I need $200, $300 and I'm, I'm really using you for money because I'm not going to pay you back, which I know you're going to give it to me anyway. Thank you for that. Read in between the lines. Anyone who ever loved me, loved me because of what I did for them. They could sit here and say, that's not true. It's true. Any man that loved me, loved the way I, I, I loved them. They loved the way I was nurturing. I was, you know, I, you know what I'm saying? How, how, well, how I tended to my man. I'm pretty sure if I ask any of my exes, what you really love about me? It's going to be like, I love how you down for me. I love how you, you vibe for me. It's not my soul. You know who loves us for our soul? God loves me for my soul. He doesn't bless me because I'm so perfect. No, I'm far from perfect. My, my love for him is perfect, though. I still have a good heart, though. And that's what God blesses and protects. So I'm going to end this video here. I hope you guys enjoyed this. Um, I love y'all so much. Comment below what other videos you want me to do next. If you watch until this point, please drop a heart emoji. That means a lot to me when you guys watch my whole entire videos. Like that makes means that means so much to me. I hope I wasn't all over the place. I love y'all so much. Bye. Love y'all.